Welcome to lecture 3.3, Derivatives of Logs and Exponential Functions. What we're going to do now is look at some um, shortcuts or formulas for how to solve logarithmic and exponential derivatives. Okay, our first function we're going to look at is just a basic log. Remember, this is log base a of x. And when we're taking the derivative of this, the derivative is equal to 1 over the argument x times the natural log of the base. Notice that x natural log a is all in the denominator. We also might be taking the log of a, a function instead of just of the variable x but of a function u which is a function of x. And here what we would have is you might think of it as the chain rule so you can see that we're going to take um, 1 over, <clears throat> this should say u, not x. It should be u log a, my mistake here. So again, pay close attention here. This should be 1 over u log a, 1 over the argument times the natural log of a, um, times the derivative of u. So this is really just the chain rule. We're first going to take the derivative of the outer function, which is the log, like we saw in this first part up here, and then we're going to times it by du or u prime, the derivative of the argument, the inner function. Okay. So here's one of those composite functions that we have um, where we would need to use the chain rule. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is take the um, <coughs> derivative of the log, base 10 of 2 plus sine x. <coughs> That's just saying take the log of that. So let's go on to the next step. So again, we're going to have 1 over the argument, 1 over 2 plus sine x, times the natural log of the base. The base here is 10, so times the natural log of the base 10. And again, then we take the derivative of the inner function. And so this is going through it step by step. So we take the derivative of the argument, or 2 plus sine x. The derivative of 2, of course, is 0. And the derivative of sine x is cosine. So we get cosine over 2 plus sine x, natural log of 10. So these are, um, these are new formulas. You need to remember that if I have the log base a of x, here's my derivative. If I have the log base a of u, then it's the derivative of u times 1 over x log a or 1 over u log a. Okay. If we're taking the derivative of the natural log, which is one of the more common functions that we're going to see, um, the derivative of the natural log is simply 1 over x. The derivative of the natural log of a function is the derivative of that argument u over the argument u. So it's kind of like, again, 1 over x times x prime, or in this case, u prime. So let's look at an example here. So again, we're not taking the log of just x, we're taking the log of a function of x, so this is the log u model. So we're going to have 1 over u, which is 1 over x cubed plus 1, times the derivative of what's inside, again, using the chain rule. The derivative of 3, excuse me, x cubed is 3x squared, plus the derivative of 1, the derivative of a constant, is always 0. So I just get this equation, or 3x squared over x cubed plus 1. Now be careful here again, sometimes students will try to cancel these out, and that's bad algebra. You can only cancel um, things out if they're being multiplied, and notice in the denominator the x cubed is being added, so it's a sum, not a product. So let's look at another one. Find the derivative of the natural log of sine x. This is again a chain rule, so this is a, a function of u. It's not just the log of sine, or excuse me, the log of x. It's a natural log of sine x, so we have to use the same model. So first we have 1 over sine x times the derivative of sine x. 1 over the argument, 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument. 1 over sine x times the derivative of sine x. Well, the derivative of sine x is cosine x. So we get cosine x over sine x, which is just equal to cotangent x. Okay. This is the same rules, um, just published there again. And... Um, <coughs> Here we have another, again, another chain product, except this time the outer function is the radical. The outer function is the radical, so we'll take that first. Remember that we can write a square root as an exponential 
Um, so this would be the natural log of x raised to the 1 half power. So the first thing I'm going to do is take um, the derivative of the radical, which means the 1 half comes down in front, times the natural log of x, and then remember I subtract 1 um, from the exponent, so 1 half minus 1 gives me negative 1 half. Remember that a negative exponent means that this, um, this function here is going to end up in the denominator because we're going to reciprocate it. And a 1 half power is also a square root. And then, of course, we take the derivative of the inner function, which is the natural log of x, which we saw by our rule is just 1 over x. So I get 1 over 2 times the square root of natural log of x. Again, the 2 is in the denominator, 1 over 2. The natural log of x to the 1 half is the same thing as the square root of natural log of x in the denominator because it's negative, and then times the derivative of the natural log of x. So let's just clean that up a little bit, and I get 1 over 2x times the square root of the natural log of x. <clears throat> Remember in previous lectures, I said it's usually a good practice to put your final answer back into the same form. And since the original form was a radical, we probably don't want to leave it in an in a, um, exponential form here, like where you say one half, um, to the power of 1 half. We want to turn that back into uh, a square root, if you will. Okay. So these are some basic um, rules for um, finding the derivatives of logs, um, natural logs, and um, different base logs. <clears throat> We're also going to look at something called logarithmic differentiation. Um, if we have a complicated function um, that has products and quotients and powers, um, it can be very difficult to figure out what the logarithm, or excuse me, what the derivative is. Um, <clears throat> so we have, there's a, something called um, logarithmic differentiation, because remember that um, when we have quotients and products, etc., we can rewrite these as sums and differences. And if we can write an equation as a sum and a difference, then remember we can take the derivative of each piece. The derivative of x plus, or f of x plus g of x is the derivative of f, plus the derivative of g, so it becomes easier to solve that way. And there's really kind of three steps. We take the natural log uh, of both sides of the equation, and then we use the laws of logarithms to simplify. We then differentiate implicitly with respect to x, and then we solve the equation for y prime. Okay, so let's look at an example here. Here's a great equation that's very complicated. Um, if we wanted to find the derivative of this, we'd have to use the quotient rule. And we can see it's quite complicated because there's a product in the numerator, there's a radical in the numerator. There's really two radicals because by this fractional or rational exponent, this is indicating that the x is a radical as well, but it's not a, um, a square root, it's a fourth root. So this is quite a um, heavy problem. Um, so let's try the logarithmic differentiation. And here are the reminders. The first thing we're going to do is take the natural log of both sides, and then we're going to simplify it. <clears throat> so remember in the numerator first here, um, and, and we don't go through these. These are algebraic rules that you should know from college algebra. So I'm going to walk through them conceptually. You don't have the steps here, um, but you've got some review homework that you can be looking at. So I have when I have the log of a product, so I'm taking the natural log of all of this. So it's the first one is the quotient rule. So it's the natural log of the numerator, which is all this bit here, minus the natural log of the denominator. Now both of these sides are simplified. I'm going to walk through those. So looking at the numerator, then I'm taking the natural log of all this numerator, but inside here I have a product. And the product rule says that I can separate each of the factors by taking the log of them and adding them. So I have the log, the natural log of x to the 3 fourths here, plus the natural log of the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay. Now, <clears throat> x to the 3 fourths, remember the exponential rule or the power rule for logarithms says I can bring any exponents down and put it in front as a multiplier. So this first piece here simply becomes 3 fourths times the natural log of x. Okay. Remember that a radical can be written with an exponent of 1 half, and so that comes down in front and becomes a multiplier here. 
And then we see the same thing happen in the denominator. The natural log of all of this has an exponent of 5, and so that can come down in front as well. Now notice this. Taking the derivative of the right side becomes much simpler now than it was here, because we can take the derivative of each of these pieces. Okay. So now we're going to implicitly differentiate. So remember that the natural log of y is going to equal um, 1 over y, because we're going to differentiate with respect to y first, and then it's going to have a y prime there as well. So we get 1 over y times y prime, or dy dx. Okay. Here we get 3 fourths times the derivative of the natural log of x. Remember, we can pull the constant out in front, and that's 1 over x. We're done there plus 1 half times 1 over the argument, 1 over x squared plus 1, times the derivative of what's inside, which is 2x. So we're done there, except for simplifying. And here we have the coefficient of 5 times 1 over 3x plus 2, that's the rule for the derivative of a natural log, times the derivative of what's inside, which would just be 3. Okay, so now I can clean this up a bit, and I can also solve for y prime. So notice what I get here if I multiply the other both sides of the equation by y. I get y times 3 over 4x. That's the first term. The 2's cancel out in the middle term, so x over x squared plus 1 minus, again, I need to multiply the 5 times all of this, and the 5's in the numerator, so it's minus 15 over 3x plus 2. Okay. Now be careful here, um, because you've expressed um, the derivative of y with respect to x, but you also have the variable y still included in there. And so do not forget that this equation started out with a definition for y or an expression for y, which is here. And so we want to substitute that back into the final answer. So this y here should be replaced with x to the 3 fourths times the square root of x squared plus 1, etc. And so we have this function for our final answer for dy dx. It's messy. Logarithmic differentiation is kind of messy. And um, because of that, I want you to really take your time and pay attention to what's going on because it's easy to make simple mistakes. The last kind of derivative rules we're going to look at today are exponential functions. Um, when you have a, a constant, remember a represents a constant, a to a power of x um, or a function of x, this simply equals a to that power of x times the natural log of the base, which is the constant. Okay. If we're looking at a natural exponential, and that means that Euler's constant is used, we have e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, which is um, it's an interesting case here where the gr you can actually see it that the, the slope of the graph of e to the x is actually e to the x at every point. It's quite curious. Now, if the function is e to the u, remember where u is some function of x, then our derivative is following the chain rule is e to the u times the derivative of the um, exponent, or so e to the u, u prime. Okay. So here I have um, 10 to the u, and we would do the same thing here. We, so we should have, um, I don't have a, a function here, an exponential with the u function, but the only thing we would add here would be the du at the end, or u prime. So we have a to the u, a is 10, u is x squared, so I'm going to have a to the u, which is going to give me 10 to the x squared, times the natural log of our base, which is 10, times the derivative of the exponential argument, the derivative of x squared, so I get 2 natural log 10 times x times 10 to the x squared, okay, because here the derivative of x squared is 2x, 2x, okay. Now they pulled the 2 out away from the x because we recognize that the natural log of 10 is also a constant. So we normally put all our constants in front of the variable x, okay. Let's look at one more problem, and we'll call it a night or a day, depending upon when you're looking at this. Notice that we have an e to the u, because we have a function of x up here instead of just x. So this is really simple. It's simply e to the u. So e to the tangent x times the derivative of tangent x, which of course is secant squared. And so um, that's our answer. So this gives you some um, beginning work to do with um, derivatives of exponentials and logs. 
I highly recommend you go back and review the rules around logs and um, exponential.